Broadcasting on Star Worldwide Networks. It's Two Small Biz Guys. And now, here are your hosts, Zen Benefiel and Ray Silverstein. And we're back again to Darn haunt right. you. Yes, we are. And it's an exciting day. Yeah, we're, we're going to have some crucial conf confrontations here. That's right. That's what you want. You're rehearsing for this uh, uh, because yeah. we're going to talk about crucial conf conf I can't see, You say. can't even say it. You don't like confrontations. Confrontations? Confr no. Yeah. Who, who see, I can't it? talk about it either. Some people don't like it. Some people love them and some people don't well, like them. Well, most people will run from confrontations. You know, they avoid them. That's Ab correct. Absolutely. And, you know, why did they do that, do you think? Before we start talking about our, our subject material, let's just uh, talk about that a little bit. Well, because I think people, oh, well, first of all, people like to avoid them because it makes them very self-conscious and they don't want to be the bad guy and they don't want to get an argu argumentative format because it, it really doesn't accomplish anything for you to, to raise these up to an argumentative manner. So what Oftentimes, we're no, and, and you know, it, it's uncomfortable. Well, it's uncomfortable, but the aspect is there are times when there are differences of opinion or when someone doesn't uh, satisfy certain results that there has to be a discussion. And, that absolutely uh, does. Now, speaking of discussions, though, when you have those uncomfortable moments, you know, where you know you've got to address something, you're just not sure how to do it, and you open up the door and you fall into it. Haven't you found in those kind of, of situations where it's far less than what you anticipated it to be? No, it usually turns out to be worse because you haven't thought about how to approach it. And therefore what happens is that emotion takes over the rational part. And I think it becomes far well, worse. Well, that's if you're a reactionary. If you respond to something, you've generally thought, you know that there's a problem yeah, but and more, you gotta confront it somehow. Yeah, but I think more people are emotional rather than rational. So you're talking from a rational agree. point of view, saying they, they know there's a problem, they got to confront it or discuss it. Rather well, from a leadership work. standpoint, you ought to be more rational. You have, you know, as we've been talking about, a little more open-mindedness, you know, some mi and mindfulness in. Okay, but cr these crucial. The process. Okay, but these crucial conversations we're going to talk about are, are really not just in a business setting. They could be in any setting. And, right, a lot of stuff and, that we talk about can be in any setting. Yeah, that's true. That's true. But the sun setting, here, sun setting. Oh, that's sun city. That's a great sun setting. Oh my God, I like. I can see. Well, that it could now. be sun Tzu setting. You, you want the show to be over already with the sun setting? No, but I. I but I do enjoy sun Tzu. Okay. Oh my God, sun Tzu? Sun Tzu. Sun Tzu. Is that a like jujitsu? Yeah, it, it's like no Sun Tzu. What? Oh, okay. no. What's on first? Okay, no. We, third. we did that a couple of weeks oh, ago. Shit. What's on first? Who's on second? I don't know. Who's on third? And Today tomorrow. Is pitching, tomorrow's catching. Yeah, got That's it. right. So thank I'm going to catch this one. Th thank you, Lou Abbott. <laughs> Wabbit? Oh no, the Waskill Widow Wabbit. Yeah, that's right. Okay. So okay. back to the topic: crucial confrontations. We just had one. Well, and we he, stumbled through it. Okay, I think one of the, one of the aspects, we take the fir, one of the first paragraphs of the write-off. He says, any new strategy, system, or program will fail unless people know how to talk to each other about other disappointments. Now, this is about the book Crucial Conf 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 See, I still can't say it. Crucial Confrontations, Tools for Resolving Broken Promises, Violated Expectations, and Bad Behavior. You got that part right. Yeah. Okay, but yes, we consistently let's, have bad behavior here. Yeah, well, let's take let's we take, violate every expectation. Right, I can see, I can tell that. So let's take this 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 statement. Is this? What are your thoughts on this? Any new strategy, thoughts. system, or program will fail unless people know how to talk to each other about other disappointments. So the, I think the key here is he talks about he's he's stating stating other disappointments. So, so you're I, saying other people, because they're emotional beings, focus on disappointments rather than um, happy times. Yeah, I think so. When when you have the, I think when you have a crucial c confrontation, it's about a disappointment. You still can't say that. I think it's about a disappointment rather than happy times. But the aspect is, is that because there's a difference of opinion. Right. So what causes the difference of opinion? Well, I often say that the, it's it comes from unspoken unfulfilled expectations you say that often i do oh what, what do you what do you say again? i have a lot of confrontations <laughs> in my life <laughs> I'm, 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 i want you to hear, what do you just say i want to hear you say it again because okay. i know you speak it often it, 
confrontation problems come from unspoken, unfulfilled expectations. So first of all, you got to have a conversation about what the expectations are so you know each other's playing field. Okay. But then the you can state what your responsibilities or, or your expectations are so that... Okay, but you're going to the solution. The aspect, as you said, they come from unspoken circumstances. Right. <clears throat> so the aspect is that when people have a disappointment, are they reluctant to even want to talk about it? That's the unspoken part. And when they start to speak about it or talk about it, it raises an emotional flag. Right. Why don't we talk about this sooner? You know, some people like to collect grudges. You know, they say, remember six years ago you yeah. did this. Yeah. <clears throat> Rather than and an ex-wife like that. Oh, now, now you're going to talk about her. <laughs> <laughs> Boy, Not I can, no more. I, I that can, was I, it. I can see you've been collecting this for a long time. Right. My, my, and, you're, and I thought your memory had failed, but yeah. I guess it hasn't. No. Okay, so people have these... Forgiven but not forgotten. Okay, but people have this aspect of collecting grudges rather than talking about them at grudges? the moment. I grudges? Thought it was, I thought it was grudges. No, grudges are a little irritants. Oh, grudges turn into grudges. Grudges turn Grudges in, are, are little... It's a short form of grudges. It's okay. A, a grudgy is a short form of grudge. All right. I never now, thought of it that way, but that's, that's probably a true statement. Okay, well, you never think a lot of, about things. And, <clears throat> that's true. I mean, I do not. Well, okay, what whatever. What the hell am I talking about? Okay, that's right. Okay, so the aspect is is that people have these circumstances where they have disappointment. They kind of collect the disappointment, and then it turns into kind of a free-for-all. But the aspect is... Because it better, all spills out, and then they create this massive pool of, of disappointment because they're sharing it with each other. Well, and the, then that whole thing just bubbles up in sur to the surface, and you've got chaos on your hands. Right. From a management standpoint. Right. You got more than chaos. Right. I agree. <clears throat> so the, the, he also talks about uh, the author's research shows that most organizations are losing between 20 and 80 percent of the potential performance of their leaders and employees inability to master crucial confrontations, which means that people who are leaders, if they're, they're really not approaching the circumstance where they have this disappointment. Well, so what generally happens so when you, let, let's say in an office environment okay. where you've got a bunch of workers in cubicles, when your boss shows up at your cubicle door, why are they there usually? Well, because he's a square, that's why, and you're talking about cubicles, so, oh, that was a mathematical well, term, he could be square rhombus. versus cubic, okay. He, he could be a rhombus. No, you know, he, he's, he's, only, he's right only a rhombus if you want him to wander off. Okay, they show up at your door. And your first reaction is, okay, why it's is like, he... It's like, oh, shit, why, why is he here? Because uh, you're expecting only, to be chastised for no. something. Okay, well, let's not... Well, that, that depends, I think, on your on your self-esteem. Because mm -hmm. if you have a higher self-esteem, why would you think you're going to be chastised? I, I am speaking in general. <clears throat> I, I get in, you know, I, I do some <laughs> weird stuff sometimes, so um, not everybody likes it. Oh, okay. But at the same time, though, in, in general, and this is what I've seen in a lot of the different environments and the people I talk to, there's this low self-esteem issue in the workplace where the first thing when your boss shows up at your door, you're going to think, oh, my God, what did I do? Okay. And that seems to be pretty okay, but the ubiquitous. Okay, but the aspect is use the term leader before. And uh, does a, a leader have a responsibility to talk about the disappointment or the uh, Absolutely. lack of performance? Absolutely. So and the question goes back to how he talks about okay, it. That's true. But if the leader doesn't talk about it, is that person a leader? No. Okay. So, so the aspect is that when a, a person who's supposed to be in a leadership role doesn't have the confrontation at the appropriate time, they're really not you know, satisfying a leadership It's not suitable role. leadership, right. Okay, so I just thought I'd bring that up as a as a sidelight. Well, that's in, that's in addition to the reasoning of the person showing up in the cubicle door. All right, so how that leader then observes the person because body oh. language speaks everything, you know. And, and a good leader is a master at reading body language, so that they know how to talk to the person. Because if they're, you know, if they look like they're starting to cower or they're withdrawn, and you approach them differently, because you know they're expecting that 
um, slap in the hand or whatever might okay they might be anticipating even though they probably didn't do anything wrong they're going to think that they did okay but see the, see your aspect is when somebody shows up at the door there's an there's an issue and i don't because well, most of the time in, in old in the environments that i've been in most of the time there is an issue if there's a lot of independent work I, I think you need to shut your door more often i mean you, stay out of the cubicle. <laughs> you stay, stay out of the cubicle. They, they right. can't find you. Right. Um, but, okay, but the aspect is when someone shows up and they have an issue, and the question is how do you approach that issue, but the first aspect is, and this author states, is you have to think about what the issue is and how you're going to approach that issue, and you talked about that previously, mm -hmm. is that you just don't want to walk in unprepared. So there's a certain amount of mental preparedness before you talk to somebody. Right. So you've got to, in essence, you've got to look at the issue and work on yourself, is what the author says. Um, so which kind of ties into Peter Senge's work. You know, one of the things he talks about is personal mastery in the workplace and, and even in life in general. But the, the <coughs> personal aspect or personal mastery aspect of that is you've got to be able to manage your emotions. You've got to know how... Uh, to deal with the problem you can't go in and just um okay so fix basic, everything see basically we haven't talked about it for a while but all this kind of relates back to eq and for those who aren't familiar the term eq basically talks about emotional, emotional intel intelligence. intelligence and so Ooh, an emotional intelligence is, comment. is knowing how to read other people so that when you read them you can properly react to that circumstance Right. Well, prepare yourself for that circumstance. Now, whether or not the correlation is made with neuro-linguistic programming or not, that indeed has something to do well, with it. And if be. you really want training, you, you could and if, if you feel like you need training in that area, then look into neuro-linguistic programming. Yeah, that NLP, will help out. NLP. Right. For those of us who can't say that whole long word. I mean, we have enough trouble with crucial confrontations to say neuro-linguistic programming. I know, but sometimes wow. we get lost in acronyms, you know. NLP and, is much easier for me, but... Yeah. So I'm going to sit, sit here and read your eyeballs because that's a good a good key portion of here, NLP. Well, let, oh. let me move, take my glasses down a little bit so you can yeah. see. My, are, you, are your eyeballs going up? That means you're, are you getting ready to go to sleep or is that you're thinking about something? Uh, up to the left. Oh, you went to the left. Uh-oh, that's a dangerous. I'm, I'm drawing. No, that's down to the <laughs> right. That's a dangerous sign. Okay, so <laughs> the aspect is he talks about what does the term crucial confrontation mean? And he states... To confront means to hold somebody accountable for disappointing you face to face. It doesn't have to be abrasive. In fact, confrontations are handled correctly. Both parties talk openly and honestly. But is a he talks about a, conf, a to confront means to hold somebody accountable for disappointing you. I don't think that's a proper term. That only a disappointment that someone holds somebody accountable. Accountable means that you know you're you're looking at them to have a certain performance, a certain expectation. Yeah, say so you're going to do something, to follow through. Yeah, but when they disappoint you, okay, then you have a discussion. Is that a confrontation? Is is a anytime somebody disappoints you, is that a, is that a confrontation? Well, I think it's a light way of saying that you know if you don't perform, <laughs> it's a disappointment. Okay. Because your your expectation is for that person to perform. So if and you, it's not about the person, it's about the behavior. Right. Well, so it's, the, the behavior is well, disappointing. Well, that's what he talks about. He he talks about that you want to talk about the, you want to talk about the results, the expectation, and not necessarily the behavior. You don't you don't want to make it personal, but the aspect is if somebody if you have a goal of a, a thousand and, just, a, and a person hits nine ninety nine, right, is that a disappointment? No. Is well, they didn't hit the goal. Therefore, you should have a confrontation. I should say Zen. No, well, your goal it, was a thousand. You only got nine ninety nine. Hakpoi. I'm going to catch that one and throw it right back at you. I mean, so I mean, is that so? The question is, what is a disappointment compared to a goal? Is it missing by one percent? Is it missed by twenty percent? Is it very subjective as to the individuals involved? If you don't have those expectations in order and in place, so to where that person or employer or whatever knows what they're responsibility is and, and what their goals are i, I can see what those are conversations that see, you have to have i can see right now we're going to have to have a conversation with an engineer because he just yawned he must think that this discussion the, the, is the, really the, overwhelming oh, come on <clears throat> it, that it could, might be no that's what he that's what he call feedback on the show 
Yeah. <laughs> it's, a, it's a real yawner. A, yaw, a, a real yawner. Okay. No. Well, the aspect is when you have these confrontations, it doesn't become a yawner because people get, if you handle them incorrectly, they become very emotional. They get out of control, as you pointed out. And they really don't, people don't leave that discussion in a very satisfactory manner. No. And if it's handled correctly, then you both grow not only the, the leadership of being able to, okay, you know, you kind of pat yourself on the back because you handled something well enough to where the person understood it, they grew from it, you had an agreement of whatever result, and you both walk away feeling like something was accomplished rather than a win-lose situation. Right. You want to have a win-win. Right. So... So speaking it, of win-wins. Are we, are we time for a break? or? Okay, so oh. with a win-win, because we're going to take a break for a few minutes so we can gather our resources. And there's a lot of good stuff on our website, which is... TwoSmallBizGuys.com. It's the number two. So go there and you can get also the crib notes on this discussion we're having today, Crucial Confrontations. And we'll be right back. Two Small Biz Guys with Zen and Ray. We'll be back after this. The digital world is vast. Is it working for you? Would you like some qualified help? Zen Benefiel is a wonder with social media who leads focused and organized workshops on multiple platforms like Facebook, Google Plus, and LinkedIn. He leads by example, not theory, and teaches you how to live large and lively on the web. From blogs to SEO, his web presence speaks for itself. Take advantage of his expertise. Visit BeTheDream.com and click on Web Wizardry. Hire him while you can. As a business owner, have you ever felt alone at the top? You don't have to be. Ray Silverstein has worked with many business owners for over 20 years facilitating peer advisory boards. He is the proverbial mentor and tormentor. A pro president's peer advisory board is a confidential monthly meeting of non-competitive owners that give support, feedback, and knowledge. They know the adage, all of us are smarter than one of us. He has walked in your shoes, having owned and sold two companies with sales in excess of $60 million and approximately 1,300 employees. In Young President's organization, he participated in peer advisory boards and felt it was a key to his success. His passion is to help small business owners succeed. He knows peer boards work when you are open, don't feel like you know it all, are willing to put issues on the table, and willing to take criticism. Be his guest at a pro advisory board meeting to see if it works for you. There's no commitment to join, and you'll have a great experience. To sample a free pro business owner peer board, email ray at proprez.com. That's ray at proprez.com. There's no commitment or charge. You're listening to Two Small Biz Guys. Now, back to your hosts, Zen Benefield and Ray Silverstein. So this book just doesn't have one author. It's got four. Kerry Patterson, Joseph Grenny, Ron McMillan, and Al Switzler. So it takes four people to talk about confrontation. Well, and that's because so, they, they, they had to have a confrontation in order to write the book. Yeah. I mean, other, if it's just one person writing the book, how can you have a confrontation unless they have a split personality? Well, you got to have multiple points of view, and you know, team members are usually best with four to five to begin with, Yeah, unless so, you're dealing with octologues. So it probably took them quite a while to write this book because they were probably busy fighting. What, right. how, don't and, you and then figuring out how to get, you know, work their, or find their way out of the paper bag. That's right. So okay. what do you do in preparation to go duke it, duke it out? Well, the aspect is that people should stop. You don't stop think about th duking it out yeah, to begin with. Du duking it out, right. Yeah. Uh, you should stop and think about what fighting words you want to use. So talk about duking it out. Yeah. But the aspect is you want to think about how, you, how you're going to approach it. And I think the interesting thing which he raises is what is the issue you really want to talk about? Because you can't talk about multiple issues. You really have to. Yeah, you know, can't fix everything at once. you you got to talk about specifics. And, and it's like anything. You know, it's one thing at a time. One at a time. One at a time. Can, can you do one and another and another or just one? You can put them in sequence and, and make them contiguous, yes. Oh, no, you can. Okay. Yeah. I, I would think you're better off having a discussion on one thing, come to a resolution in the action plan, 
Well, yeah, I, that's the, before I had moved to the next thing. But I thought that's what you meant. But no, covering things in. Oh, I'm sounding like a millennial now. But no, yeah, yeah, no. Um, that sounds very youthful. It it very is. And in that youth, you have to do one thing at a time. And yes, it's best to finish something before starting something else. Okay. Unless you're a seasoned multitasking pro, oh. and most of us aren't. Oh, the studies show that people who are multitasking are not as efficient who pe or as people who are single tasking. But that's a different issue because yep. cause I like that to multitask to too. Because like when uh, something's like you're in your computer, when something you got to wait for something to happen. Right, I'm off on another screen. Yeah, you might as well do something else. Yeah, absolutely. Because who wants to sit around and wait? I don't. So going back to this, when you're having this crucial discussion and then you're, the party you're talking to is going to stop and think, do you run around and say, oh, I got to do something else while you're thinking? No, you put it on pause. But, but, well, you or put you, them on pause. No, okay. you put your own head on pause because a lot of times you want to fill that empty space. Oh. You have a tendency not to want to give the other person time to respond. You want to know what they're thinking. See, like that. You run, you run into the mic with your nose yeah, if, that's if right. you don't give people time to well, pause. When you have a proboscis, that's the, when you have a proboscis, well, that's so pro. It's, it, it well, you were talking about nodding out earlier. That's right. Yeah, come on. Wake up. Well, it, it helps me breathe every now and then. I have to clear my nose. Sure. So. Well, I can understand that. So what you have to take time for is to unbundle the problem first okay so me, it, it may be multiple things that you think it is but you've got to figure out how to sort it out and find out what the real issues are okay so that goes back to the issue we, we talked about previously in other shows is that you really issue? have to no it's not me it's you that's right what i talked about issue you that's right what i talked about, about ish me's no you would never talk about this because this was a very intellectual observation <sighs> i made so okay so therefore i'll take i'm going to pat myself on the back for uh, that one i can be but, such a simple thank you all right, you're welcome. So you really have to talk and drill down to what are the root issues that you're really causing the misbehavior or whatever the problem might be or the loss of expectation. So what are those real issues? And, and separate that out from all the rest of the other things and talk about that. So does that happen in the conversation? Or does it happen beforehand, before you have the conversation? We were talking about things you do before... So I guess I answered my my own question there. Do you, no, you didn't answer Gee, the question. It's funny how that happens. Yeah, well, give the answer right now because uh, you just well, you do it before. Oh, you do it before. Because we were talking about how, how you do things before, you know, how you set things up before the confrontation. So this is one of the things that you do. You get all you get yourself clear. Okay. You so move away all the crap. Okay. So you're saying the first thing you might do is sit down and say, okay, what is really What's the real issue? What here? is really the issue we want to talk about? Right. Secondly. What are some of the words I want to use so I don't ratchet up this whole thing into an emotional issue and so I can really you no know, drill down to what the problem is. Right. So you don't walk in and say, Zen, you know, you're really doing a crappy job. Is that a way to approach it? Absolutely not. Oh, okay. So I you just Well, said, it depends on the relationship that's developed, <laughs> I suppose, you know. Oh. Some people can talk like that to each other and it's fine and they'll say, "Yeah, what what did I do this time?" Okay. Right? But that's a long-term relationship or one that's developed over time to be able to handle that kind of thing. If you've got an employee that you don't deal with very much at all, then absolutely not. You don't want to start there because that's going to be abrasive, offensive and and it's going to shut them down. Okay. So this goes back to the thinking process you talked about before. Yes, yeah, so what is that person's like? What's really going to drive them? And what's going to drive them to a proper behavior rather than an improper behavior? Mm -hmm. So you don't say you did a crappy job. You say, well, no, there's an issue here that might be a problem. Yeah. And well, let's explore what that, let's explore how we can improve the performance. And there's a key thing. Let's explore. Is that you've got to be on the same side of it. And the more you can bring that person over to, uh, to where you're both looking at whatever issue so you don't just is. say you got to do a better job you say let's explore yeah okay or something to that nature because what you're doing is creating a team effort of looking at us looking for a solution right even though you may already have that solution in mind and, and whatever performance level needs to change or what aspect of their performance needs to change you still have to feel like you're on the same side okay because the job's the boss right right Right. He, he also talks. I call that job archy. 
Jabarki. Jabarki. Oh, so the person you talk about that says that's malarkey. They sometimes can say so, that too. So does yeah. malarkey is mol a multiple term? Or is that uh, no? Mol's Joe's brother. <laughs> oh, mol does better. Or Job's brother. Okay, so when you say that's jabarkey, and I think, oh, that's malarkey. Oh, it's we, just part of the oligarchy. Oh, so we have a problem right there with the definition. We have of no words, hierarchy, and we haven't gotten down to the root issue. So it's rush, it's Russia, it's Worcestershire it's, sauce. No, it's ishark, it's isharchy or something like that. Yeah, ishuarchy. It, it, it's ismiarchy. Oh, we're just I no, I can't even spell these words. Yeah, me neither. That's that is malarkey. Okay. Okay. So he says when you have these discussions, first you have to be concise. You must which drill, we certainly aren't. You must. This, that's true. You must distill the issue to a single sentence. Lengthy problems, wow. descriptions, often obscure the real issue. You know, if the aspect so, there is... So you practice in a mirror before you go? Could be. Or, Maybe you should just, do that. Yeah. But the aspect is, is that some people like when you're very concise, they take it as you know, being abrupt that you're really not uh, with them. So when you say, you no, know, so when I said, no, you really have a problem here, we have to resolve and work, let's work at it together uh is that is that better than saying no zen there's there's an issue that performance really isn't up to expect to ex I so you can't even say it i can't even say it you do so well right you're, See, you're i'm glad that that's not in your vocabulary <laughs> so you say that it's, it's really not up to expectations and no you've been doing this 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 and this and this and the whole thing is wrong so that whole discussion is too long so you really have to say, you know, on this particular issue, we really have well, a problem. Well, it also sets me in a defensive mode. You, no. you want me to be listening to you so that we can work on it and the solution together. Anything you do that closes my ears is not going to work. Oh, now I know why you wear those ear flaps. Okay. Yeah, no, okay. those are ear rings. <laughs> I, I tie them up. I, you know, there's holes on the top of the ear, too. Occasionally, I flap them up. You oh, know, you do? Okay. Yeah. All That's right. when I'm not flying. Oh, do you do you wiggle them? Yeah. No, uh, but they do flap when I fly. They do flap when you fly. Yeah. Okay, that's good. That's good. So if you gained Better weight, check my fly. So if you gained weight, we could call you Dumbo. Is that it? Uh huh. Okay. Yeah, I've been called that before. Uh, and people, so when they see you, they say tusk tusk. Uh, occasionally. Okay. It's more occasionally. Like tisk, tisk. All right. So he talks about the aspect that. One clear sign that you're not discussing the right topic is when you find yourself having the same problem solving discussion over and over again. You go off again. on too many tangents. So the aspect. And loose associations. Well, the aspect. But we're is, not punny today. We're not punny today? Not yet. We're funny. We're not punny. Right. We don't always have to be punny to be funny. This is true. Today, today we're, we're having a very serious, crucial conversation. About conflict. And, and it becomes very difficult to have humor in these very crucial conversations. Crucial confrontation. See, you're still not saying the word confrontation. Well, I had another word when I said didn't, and you picked on that one a couple weeks ago. I did. I didn't get it. I know you didn't, and you still don't. So, don't and didn't. Yeah. Th they're the same, off the same root. D. So we have to understand. <laughs> I'm going to bring it back on topic this time. So, so to understand the various kinds of content pattern, relationship issues that routinely pop up during crucial confrontations, consider the following three dimensions is three dimensions so we're yeah we're I, not the fifth dimension yet okay and okay. i thought you liked that one the best but okay three dimensions i, I what, do what are the three dimensions billy's gone consequences intentions once well you skipped over something first he talks about the aspect in order to find the right target to talk about you got to talk about content pattern and relationship that's what I just said, to understand the various kinds of content pattern relationship issues. So, okay. so maybe I did jump ahead there a little bit, but you know, pay attention. Okay. Keep up. Well, keep up. All right. Know. Why don't we as fast so, as you? I know you don't, but that's okay. Okay. So Speaking of being fast, we're going to take a, a fast break here, and we'll be back with you it, since we went a little over on the yeah, last one. Yes, but as soon as we talk about content pattern relationships when we come back. Two Small Biz Guys with Zen and Ray. We'll be back after this. 
Debs and Benefield with Be The Dream Transformational Life Coaching and Professional Services at BeTheDream.com. Our mission, to provide leading-edge transformational personal and business development services. Our services include life coaching, enterprise coaching, partnering facilitations, and possibilities coagulating. We've been in business since 1988. In times of massive change, you need someone who can help you adjust and transform. I can meet that challenge with you, offering a stellar skill set from serving individuals and companies for over 20 years. I invite you to peruse BeTheDream.com and put me to the test. Fill out the coaching assessment survey and give me a call. The first call is free and you can find out if I'm what you are looking for in a coach, consultant, or service provider. Call 480-633-7179. Let your dreams mold future realities. Be the dream. Business owners want to call their own shots, make appropriate income, and control their destiny. Our passion is to help you achieve your goals. A Pro Peer Advisory Board is just the thing. It's a confidential monthly meeting of non competitive owners facilitated by a pro who has walked in your shoes. He's your mentor and tormentor moving you ahead. When you have issues or opportunities keeping you awake, where do you get help? Pro Boards give support and non-biased feedback from your peers. To sample a free Pro President's board meeting, email ray at propres.com. There's no commitment or charge. Email ray at propres.com. You're listening to Two Small Biz Guys. Now, back to your hosts, Zen Benefield and Ray Silverstein. You know, if you're listening to the show for the first time, and you might be, we've got a bunch of other shows that we've done in the past, and they're all at twosmallbizguys.com. That's the numeral two small B I Z guys, plural, dot com. And not only do you have uh, a plethora of shows to select a, from. A what? A plethora. A plethora. Oh, plethora. My golly. Yeah. Um, in other words, a lot. Yeah, we got a lot of stuff there. And we've got um, business worksheets. We've got white papers. We've just got all kinds of freebies for you. So go check it out. And uh, if you like the show, share it with others. We, we love that. So back to our discussion today, we're talking about crucial confrontations. And we just mentioned that there, in order to understand the various kinds of content pattern relationship issues, there are three aspects of it. But what we want to make sure that you understand first is that relationship concerns are far bigger than either the content or the pattern, right? Yeah, right. I have some relations I really don't care for whatsoever. So... I think we all do. <laughs> oh, you know, oh, the, the, oh, you jumped in on that. That's, okay. that's where tolerance takes place. And, and how about X relations? Is that even, even a bigger it, problem? It, 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 well, it depends on how you let go of the relationship and, and how you decide to move on. Okay. You know, some can be great. You can be you know great friends and you just realize that, hey, yeah, we love each other, but we just can't live together. Okay, okay. cool. You know, it's like I, I love you, but I can't work with you. You know, that kind of thing, too. So... In these consequences, intentions, and wants, each provides the distinct method for first unbundling and then prioritizing complex problems. And granted, most of the time, the problems that you encounter in the workplace, they're not really simple problems. They're usually rather com complex because you're dealing with relationships, performances, expectations, um, and communication. Well, the aspect those. is, okay, but the aspect of that is that goes back to drilling down to recognizing what the problem is because it may look like a simple problem on the surface, but when you drill down, it might be very complex. Right. And also the aspect is is the communication, which we're talking about today, is how do you address that issue or that problem with the other party so that you can come to a beneficial resolution. Doot, doot. You're good for more. No. Oh. There you go again. You like that tooting. I do. Oh, no, you're, you're good for more what? At beneficial. Oh, back to, oh, you want us to finance, talking about financing our show. Yeah, exactly. And speaking of financing, you know, if you guys, uh, if there's anybody out there that would like to sponsor, then please go to the website and uh, look at Engage. Toot, toot. Tab, and <laughs> okay. you'll get more. Okay. So he talks about 
consequences, intentions, and wants. And wants. <clears throat> so the so, consequences, you know, it's like I mentioned behavior. You're looking at the behavior. The behavior is what's disappointed you to begin with, but you really don't want to focus on that. You want to look at what happens afterwards, the consequences. Okay, so the aspect, you use the word behavior. And is behavior the same as results? Because in the expectation in the business world, people look at the results. The results are not being achieved. If the behavior is wrong, is that a problem? Is that a, in other words, if I'm achieving the results, but you don't like my behavior, is that a problem? Well, I think that's a different use of behavior than what they're talking about. I think that what the authors are saying that the behavior is that which produces results. Okay. Desired expectations and, okay. and results. All right. So, uh, so the expect is that behavior is not achieving the results. Right. And therefore, they have this conversation, which can be a crucial confrontation. The, the word confrontation comes from the aspect of not achieving results. And the aspect he also is talking about is defining what is the real issue and how you approach them to really get this going. So he talks about get your head right before opening your mouth. Think twice before you speak once. Gee, does that mean, you know, because you got two ears and one mouth? Well, that could be. That's pretty easy. You know, I, my dad used to say, be careful. When you point fingers, you've got three coming back at you. You and do. So you got to have three solutions to the problem you're pointing at or don't open your mouth. Oh, so, so okay. that was some really good wisdom. I didn't understand it till years later because, you know, well, I don't really, I, I wasn't. I don't the, fully quite understand either because what happens if you don't have a solution? So therefore, you never open your mouth. Well, if you so and not everybody has solutions to a problem. Sometimes this is in, that's what you ask. But the pointing out basically was more in terms of judgment or criticism of something. You know, you can criticize things all day long, but OK, do something about it. That's right. Really? You know, we can hear all the talk. Well, a lot of people. What are you going to do? Okay, a lot of people like to criticize, but they don't have they don't have solutions for the issue. Exactly what he and, was talking and about. And also, they a lot of people like to criticize and don't want to help work for the solution of that issue. They just like to criticize. So, how do you get beyond that in the crucial confrontation phase? You know, you're looking for effective problem solvers, right? Well, I think the aspect, how do you get beyond it when you talk about it in general, is that people have to take ownership and that there's an ownership of the solution and ownership. First of all, there's ownership of the problem, but also the solution has to have ownership. And, and the discussion, we haven't gotten there yet in this discussion, but the the resolution. I guess we're there now, huh? No, no, no. We're gonna, we have arrived. No, because we, we have time yet in the show, okay. so we're not going to get there that early. All right. So we want we don't want people to click off and go away. We don't want to show up early. No, we want we, we want to show up early, but we want them to stay to the very, very end. Oh. Okay. So going back, I'm going to yawn on that one. Yeah. So, so he says the first Ooh. the first few seconds of the interaction sets the tone of everything that follows. You have no more than a sentence or two to establish the climate. So that goes back to the aspect balmy. of thinking about, yeah, I know, it's, it's more than balmy if you use the wrong words to start off with. It becomes very hostile. Uh, don't like that. <clears throat> That's like Phoenix in summer, so, know, uh, August. That, well, it's very hostile, hostile? outside. No, yeah. just hot. It's, it's hot style? It's only hot. It's a hot style. I've I got to tell you, anybody that can stand that weather here in the middle of summer, Okay, well, that's, let's, let's go back to this. Okay. Because summer's over. It so is. the aspect is, this, this keeps summer on Summer someplace. This keeps on repeating in a, different, in a different format that you have to really think about what you're going to say to start off with. Because if you don't think about it, you can create a wrong environment, and you're really not going to be able to get to the issue and get to the issue in a very positive, cooperative manner. Well, you've been successful in resolving a lot of issues in your day, <laughs> old I, as it may be. No. So what do you find most effective? Well, I think you generally people that have an issue that you do start off and you say, well, no, there's an issue here. How can we resolve it? Or what can we do to work together to get there? Or what have you, have you considered this type of no suggestion or idea. Uh, you you can't really go in and say no. You're you're doing a lousy job. 
uh, you you can't go in and just say, no, you didn't get to the results. Right. Now, you can always do that, but to me, that's kind of the last resort. It's no, you, you start well, you off. You catch more flies with honey, right? I mean, right. you've got to be um, willing to show that you care about the relationship that you're establishing or have established and show the respect that the other person deserves in the process. Yeah, so he's, but he also talked about if you have the same discussion over and over again, uh, wh what does that mean? Well, it means somebody's not listening means that someone's not listening or they don't have the ability to resolve the issue. So then you get involved. In but if you come up with a solution that you both agree on and then it's not implemented, which is kind of what you're saying, what happens if it doesn't work? Yeah, if it doesn't work and you talk about it again and they, they're, and they want to work at it and get a solution and it still doesn't work. So the aspect is, okay, is the, is the expectation re realistic? That's the first thing you have to consider. Because if you have a goal and you're measuring somebody against a goal and it's not realistic, you're going to have these discussions over and over again. Right. Okay, next question. If it's realistic, is the process correct? Because if the process isn't correct, okay, maybe that's why you're not getting there. And eventually you get down to the point, do you have the right person who can do this job? Do they have the skill set? And if they don't have the skill set, can you give them the skill set? Or do you just have to change the party? Partly the first part, partly the second part, and partly the third part. Uh, I can see you have that legal training. I do. Oh, I'm, I'm okay. party, party. Oh, you, oh, uh, what, it's the you time just, of year. I can, I can tell now. You don't have the legal training. You just have the party training. Oh. I, I, I tow the party line. Okay. I can tell. Oh. Is, that, is that when they let you in? <laughs> yeah, I do. Okay. And, I, and I have a trail behind me. Okay. That sounds awfully good. Am I going to get an invitation or you just Absolutely. have to? Absolutely. Everybody's invited. No, that's, you know, and you've got to walk through the door yourself. No, no. Here are you, now, if I walk through that door, am I going to be? Are you going to be afraid because I walk through the door? That's going a, back to your very I'm, first comment. No, I'm not afraid of nothing, honey. Nothing, nothing. <laughs> oh, that's a new word. Nothing, honey. That goes with that goes with didn't. Right. D didn't nothing. Okay. Didn't do nothing except spread the honey. So the aspect is you. Uh, you ask a question, you're thinking, would a reasonable, rational person, decent person do what is being reasonable? What is being I don't know. Done? Would a reasonable, rational person do what we're doing? I don't think so. No, of course not. I mean, they would be on TV instead of radio. Yeah. <laughs> so how do you um, create they, it? They know where the money is. Yeah. Speaking of money. Yes. Go right ahead. We're to go back to the, we're talking money. Yeah. Yeah, I'm waiting for it. So go ahead. Oh, waiting? Okay, we're talking. Don't wait on me. Remember, you already you just walked through the door. What are you waiting on me for? <laughs> okay, so let's talk about the aspect. Uh, how how to start a crucial or critical confrontation? Once you've chosen what you want to do, what 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 you confront, and you learn what is wrong style. What do you do first? We talked about before thinking about what you're going to say. Mm -hmm. We talked about thinking about what is the rational issue. I mean, what is really the issue that's causing you this problem? So then the aspect is, you now you're ready to approach the party and talk to them. And that you want, that, you're, that you know, somebody's let you down. So the first thing you really want to do is, and I think we want to take a break so people will come back afterwards and find out what the first thing you really want to do. All righty then. <laughs> oh, is that overwhelming? So you? we're going to, uh, it's underwhelming. We're going to take a quick break and overwhelm you with some commercials and we'll be right back. Thanks for listening to Two, Two Small, Small Biz, Biz Guys. Guys with Zen and Ray. We'll be back after this. Business owners want to call their own shots, make appropriate income, and control their destiny. Our passion is to help you achieve your goals. A Pro Peer Advisory Board is just the thing. It's a confidential monthly meeting of non-competitive owners facilitated by a pro who has walked in your shoes. He's your mentor and tormentor moving you ahead. When you have issues or opportunities keeping you awake, where do you get help? Pro boards give support and non-biased feedback from your peers. To sample a free pro president's board meeting, email ray at propres.com. There's no commitment or charge. Email ray at propres.com. 
Are you a small business owner looking for education and information and don't have time for school? Is there an area of your business you'd like to know more about but aren't sure where to go or who to ask? Practical Biz U is an online repository of small business courses now available to you on the web. There are single class options, bundles for specific areas, and monthly memberships for ongoing learning opportunities. Go to practicalbizu.com and sign up today. You're listening to Two Small Biz Guys. Now, back to your hosts, Zen Benefield and Ray Silverstein. All right, so we're talking about crucial confrontations. And to create a, a climate, this is what the author says, to create a climate of safety, use the tool of contrasting. Now, what that means is before you start the confrontation, anticipate how the other person might anticipate the worst. If you bring up a quality problem, the person might believe you think he is unskilled in general and that you don't like him as a person and that you plan to take disciplinary action. That's not what you want. You know, and most people, you know, again, I'm going to refer back to my dad and some of the wisdom he gave me. You plan for the worst, hope for the best, and then you're happy with what you get. Right. Okay. So the aspect is how do you create a climate of safety or a climate of trust when you're going to have this discussion? Uh, a lot of people, when they talk about it, they always give a compliment first, and then they use the word but. They say, no, Zen, you really do a great job, but. And people and are so used to hearing that. So how do you come up with an original kind of, you know, hey, how you doing? How you been? How's the kids? You know, and hey, by the way, you know, uh, noticed this the other day. What do you think we can do something about that? Okay, so his his comment was, he says, for example, I don't want you to think I'm unhappy with your overall job performance. Overall, I'm very satisfied. I just wanted to talk about the quality problem on one project. So he didn't use the word but, but, but it was kind of implied there. It was implied there. Yeah, that I'm, you know, I'm happy with your satisfaction. I'm trying to create this area of trust. I'm trying to create this area of safety so you feel good. And but by the same time, though, it, he doesn't, by not putting that, there's no separation. It's like, I'm satisfied with your work. I really like what you're doing. I just want to talk to you about this particular quality problem that we've got. Now, there, there's a person who does some sales training who says you never word, use the word but. You always use the word and. Mm -hmm. So if you were to take that and you say, you know, overall, I'm very satisfied. And I just want to talk to you about a quality project problem one project so the word and carries a much lesser uh, impact than the word but or when you leave that word out completely yeah so stay on point yes so yeah. the aspect is if you think about the words that you use which we talked about earlier it really can get you there and so you really have to think about how you're going to approach this and how you're going to respond to issues right and what you're opening and one of our other guests, you know, Jerome Landau, uh, who's a professional mediator and, and um, feather smoother, we'll say, um, in regards did, to did, another. Did you say he's a professional inebriator? No, a feather smoother. Oh, okay. I can understand smoothing feathers. Mediator. If I if I was if I wasn't it could be a mediator. I don't if know. If I'm a professional in, in inebriator, inebriator, you can't even say it. You I, have I, another drink, right? That's right. I can smooth feathers very well. Yes, you can. <laughs> So I can also ruffle feathers very well. But so. you can also strangle the bird. That's right. That's for the birds. Yeah. Too. Okay. So when the conversation turns ugly, it's usually because others misunderstand not your content, but your intent. So this is one of the places where you really need to establish the relationship with the individual and, and realize that, you know, you're intending to for them to perform at their best. Right. But the but the intent is that for you are there to help. Right. And not to harass. Right. So so you got two H words, help, help and harass. harass. So you rather take the word that says for shorter. And then you can have, by by helping and not harassing, then you can have a hooray. Oh, that's very good. Oh, alliteration. Yeah. Help, don't ha don't harass, but hooray. What a, that's magnificent. Thank you. That That is a... H H H. You are so easily satisfied. Sometimes, sometimes. So you got to make it motivating. Okay. 
So as you finish off your description of the problem, you want to end up with a diagnostic question. Now, what happened? And so another as aspect is when, when you haven't achieved the expectation, what happened? Did, uh, if it's sales, did, did you lose a customer? Did the customer cut back, with they cut back on their, on the amount that they were going to purchase because so of then the you've economy. got to really pay attention to whether they're offering an excuse a rationalization or an actual problem that needs to be addressed i think that's a good point because many times it might be just an excuse and then you really have, then you really are off on a, on a different area right so you have to really say no what happened well let's explore what happened so the i think the word explore comes in you know is it rather than saying you no know, it's really you're just giving an excuse you say, let's explore what really happened. No, tell me about it. So the, all these confrontations require time you know, to go through and, and resolve the issues. And if you try to do them too quickly, you, know, you send the wrong message also. Absolutely. And you've got to allow yourself time. You know, you can't be in a rush to do everything. <laughs> so it also comes back when people talk about, you know, my number one asset in my business are people. You also, if you're going to, you just can't rush people. You, if you want to build that relationship and really get the leverage of having good people, you have to spend the time with them. Absolutely. And Mihaly, Csikszent Mihaly wrote a great book about that process. It's called Flow, The Psychology of Optimal Experience. And in any kind of operational aspect, you want to have flow. You don't want to have bottlenecks. You know, then you go to... Um, Goldblatt for that one. Okay, so you're going to pour it on. Is that what you're saying? Yep. Okay. You're going to pop that cap okay, in so. a different way and <clears throat> pour a drink of celebration because you've been able to complete a job. Okay, so he says... Because you've shipped it. Yeah, okay. So he says that not to be not to get involved in this crucial confrontation. He says, making, make it motivating. How to help others want to take action. Mm -hmm. So motivation is about expectations. And... He says, people, when they decide what to do in the, in the future, want to know what a particular behavior will yield. So part of this is always, what's in it for me? So when you talk to somebody, it's always, what's in it for me? So does that mean if they don't perform, what's in it for you is you're gone? Or does that mean that what's in it for you is that you might get a, a raise or maybe you might get recognition? Well, it means you haven't set the, the best expectations or had not just the, the job description in place, but the performance expectations in place, right? Which those are all critical conversations. So one of those things that you do is you link to existing values, which is what you've established initially before they, or, or before the job starts, right? You have values, company values, core values, um, vision and mission statements, all of those kinds of things that you tie into it. Okay, but I also think one of the things that a lot of small businesses miss when you talk about existing values, they don't tell people what a good job is. And so therefore, when they come in to have this conversation, there is two differences of expectation. The employee doesn't really know what the expectations are. And therefore, they have a difference of opinion. They think they're doing a good job in management or leadership hasn't really explained to them what is a good job. Right, and that's where not only do you need a good job description, you need a job performance level that, that delineates the expectations for that particular job. Right, and also the one other thing which adds to that is they also should, when you go back to the, the vision of the company, it, the job description should also explain how that role fulfills the vision and mission. Right. Because otherwise, a person is just doing a task rather right. than being part well, of the Well, you've team. got to connect the dots. It's like being in high school and not understanding, you know, how the particular math problem applies to the real world. Well, once you get into the real world, you understand that, but you've got to make the connection before then for, okay. it, for it to be valuable. Okay, so we, we talked about values, the expectations. And then we're talking about, you know, he talks about the sh what are the short-term benefits of performing, in other words, we get recognition, we get more pay. Will uh, people on the team think that you're really working along with them? Then he talks about the aspect of placing a focus on the long-term benefits. So what's really more important here, the short-term benefit or the long-term benefit for the individual? I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Depends on whether they're a freelancer or not. 
That goes back to one of our other shows well, that we talked about freelancers. A free, if they're a freelancer, they're really interested in the short-term benefit. Right. But if they're there for the long haul, if they really enjoy the company and there's a family atmosphere and they're treated well and reasonable pay and, and all of those kinds of things, then you're going to be more interested in the long-term Okay, results. but when you talk about the millennial aspect, because uh, that, that particular party knows talking about the millennials being more freelancer. Right. And you talk about management wanting people to be more, more of a long-term type of environment. So during this discussion, you have to think about what is going to motivate that particular individual. Yeah, what's your business time. model it, or, or what's your framework of how people are moving through your company? Do you want them there for short term? Do you want them, you know, train them and move them, train them and move them? And what kind of, of model do you want and making sure that everybody's on that same page for the type of culture that you're creating for your organization and it might be short term move people along and, and you know kind of a constant churn not necessarily that you're churning them out of the company but that you're cross training okay then he, okay he also talks about the aspect of he says introduce a hidden victims in other words by perf not performing this task up to expectation it impacts x y and z so in other words, if the sales aren't up to expectations, it's not just you who's not meeting it. All of a sudden, people in production may be laid off. Right. Uh, we won't be able, to, the company may not make money. We may have to possibly even close the doors, the extreme case. Ultimately, so it's gonna affect the cash flow. So a lot of people think about only the tasks they're doing rather than what is a task for the other parties within the organization. Now, how about that mirror? Mirror? What about that? How mirror? about that mirror? Are what you holding it up? And down right. Oh, guys, don't hold it up to me. It'll break. I'll break it. So I have a good face it. for radio. Uh, that's perfect. I agree. The one thing you said <laughs> that I fully agree. Perfect. So. So there is an aspect of. But if you really want to see Zen's face, you have to go to our caricatures that are on. Yeah, two small we are guys. a couple of caricatures. That, that's for darn sure. Okay, so you want to hold up a mirror to describe how how your how your actions are being viewed by others. And that goes back to also, but that also, if a person has a high self-esteem, they may not care. Right, because there's there's two there's a two sides to that coin. It's you know it's not how people view you, but how you view yourself that matters. And then the flip side of that, it doesn't matter how you view yourself, but how others view you. So there's there's a fine line in between those two, especially if you're in a leadership role, because it does matter how people view you, and how you treat others is going to affect how others view you. Now, if you're an employee or, or a production worker or whatever, then if you are seen as somebody that's just trying to get by, that's just there to pay, you know, to get a paycheck, do as little as possible, then that mirror image needs to be reflected a little bit better because I don't think anybody really wants to be seen like that. And, if you, and if you have workers like that, you might want to consider um, other alternatives. Okay, we're going we're gonna to have to move along very quickly now because we're running out of time. So carrots and sticks. So let's let's move on to the you no know, to the end where really people have to talk about uh, the what the what the complete resolution. You really move want to, to action, right? Move. We're going to move to action. We're going to move right into action. Right. So the create a complete plan. Right. So the complete plan contains who, who, what, when, and follow up. So the question is, who's going to do what? So a WWWF. That's right. And it's F U, really. Gee, yeah, that's true. It's, oh, it's WWWF. Hey, F U, buddy. That's a, so be careful what you say. This. Yeah. Okay, so he talks about who, what, where, and when follow up. So the aspect who's going to do what, what they're going to do, when they're going to get it done by, and then also the responsibility when you're going to follow up to see that the performance and the behavior is really what is mutually agreed to. So a lot of people leave out the follow-up, that they don't talk about when they're going to follow up, how they're going to follow up. So they, so there really isn't that measurement at the end. And I think that's one key aspect. The other aspect is a lot of people also leave out who's supposed to do what. They just say, you got to do better. But they don't say who's going to do what to right. help out. Well, when I do partnering workshops for building road and bridge construction, the, the, when the issue is determined to actually be an issue, it's who's going to be responsible for what, by when, given to whom, and distributed through whatever communication network yes. is necessary to get it all 
so there's tighten it up. so right. you're talking about in that discussion they have wwwfu yeah, absolutely so so we so as a party so, words, uh, uh, so as a party words for our audience, partying we're, words. No, we're going to say we're gonna F you because we want you to follow up with our show and listen to it next week. Absolutely, and uh, again, check out our website. We'd love to have uh, you as a guest potentially, and uh, sponsorships are always available too. We, we're reaching over a hundred thousand. We're actually closing in on a hundred and fifty thousand listens. Yes, imagine what that could do for your company be overwhelming overwhelming and it's one way to reach your goals so you don't have to have those crucial conversations a hey, happy 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 and have a happy new year this okay. two small biz guys i'm zen and ray and, and we'll talk to you next week Thank you for listening to Two Small Biz Guys with Zen Benefio and Ray Silverstein. You can hear Two Small Biz Guys live every Wednesday at noon or catch their show on demand anytime 24-7 right here on StarWorldWideNetworks.com.